California the weather situation here. Okay? Despite what I'm talking about with the box. Um, what I mean by that is berries tend to ripen really quickly. They get a lot of sun. And so berries will mature quickly, but the rest of the plant might not mature. So the stems and the seeds um, might ripen later. So the canola maturity of the entire plant is, uh, is not ripening at an even rate. And that's why a lot of people like to plant in cooler areas. Because then the berries don't clump up with sugar as quickly, and you can kind of extend the growing cycle and get more flavor complexity that way. Um, I'd say this is particularly, particularly but I think having the wooden stems, Pinot Noir, and Syrah, because some people like to ferment Pinots and Syrahs on the stems with whole cluster. Um, we feel that it adds, um, first of all, the wood tannins from here can soften the wine a little bit. Um, we can hide or remove some more certain tannins. And it also adds layers of complexity. So a little more herbaceousness. So um, very more Burgundian um, or some parts of the world that you do that in France. All right. So what do we got here? This is Pinot Noir. Um, you can imagine when, when the grapes came in, basically, it looks like a little corn on the cob. Some people have eaten some kernels off this corn on the cob. Um, and what we were seeing earlier this year is that some of the clusters were literally um, shorter than my hand. This is very similar, but the berry structure was really small. It's just the day before picking this, uh, it rained a little bit in the Anderson Valley where this came from. So um, this came from a vineyard called Hell of a Vineyard? <laughs> uh, yeah, Hell of a Vineyard. Uh, and um, so the berries kind of plumped up a bit. Since the Pinot tends to be really densely packed, uh, rain is actually kind of dangerous with Pinot. Um, Pinot, Chardonnay, like this, the grapes are really tightly packed. You can imagine, if we go back to maybe this thing, the berries were this small, right? Now, if it rains, and it's a really, really tightly packed cluster, there's no place for those grapes to go, and what happens is they burst. There's no place for them. And since the grapes have got yeast on them, it's got bacteria on them, and so Pino is, uh, is definitely you know more susceptible to rot than the well that I saw, where the wind can just go right through and dry this fruit out. Pinot Noir. We have uh, some some Merlot right here from. Excuse me, from Red Mountain, from Clipson, right here, and uh, it's starting to lignify a little bit, but it hasn't really gotten to that woody structure. And you can sort of see like the bright green going to take a couple of the, the berries off, and when you bite them, you're going to get a blast of sugar for like 20 seconds or so, and so you're going to be like, ooh, sugar water. Mm -hmm. going back Wait about 20 seconds. They have seeds in them, okay? So try not to bite right into the seeds. Let the skin macerate in your mouth. Roll them across your tongue. How come in your cheek? Because after about 20 to 30 seconds, you're going to start getting a little drying sensation, a little astringency. And you'll notice that the tannins are going to start to assert themselves. Tannins are kind of a drying, a drying sensation. Um, acidity is kind of what causes the salivary response in the wine, and tannins are what kind of causes the drying sensation in the wine. So what we're looking for is that drying sensation um, that comes off. Now, this is Zinfandel. This fruit's getting a little old now. Been here what, like two and a half weeks, but you know, pretty big, pretty big berries going on there. And you also notice some dehydration. Dehydration isn't isn't that big of an issue, really, because these things are actually going to plump right back up when they go into the musk, which is the juice, and they'll just rehydrate. When you're out in the vineyard, people often grab grape samples to bring back to the lab for analysis, and you kind of take that with a grain of salt. Because it's hard to get juice samples out of these raisins, okay? So when uh, when you see a lot of dehydration, 
you're kind of thinking, all right, these are my numbers, which would be, let's say, my acidity numbers and my the bricks level, which is your soluble, soluble solids. Most people are equated to um, the density, but most people are equated to sugar. Um, so these are my sugar numbers, but always kind of hold off on that, kind of bump it up a little bit, because once these rehydrate, they're going to release their sugars into the must, and your, your numbers are going to be much more in terms of how much sugar is um, We're going to be doing quite a bit of spinning today.